Okay. Okay, if we're ready to start, we need to see that um, Darcy Drager. Will you stand? Will you stand? Whatever you want. Hi, all. Uh, as you know, my name is Darcy Drager, and I'm running the State Assembly here in LD25. I'm a Chester resident. I spent about 20 years in Wall Street uh, as a regulatory analyst and project manager. And despite swearing all throughout my Midwestern childhood that I would never have livestock, currently my family and I have a small farm in Chester where we raise sheep, chickens, and honeybees. I am running for office because I believe in the ability of the government to do good, to make good change in our communities, to help people in their lives. I have seen the impact of good public policy when it's implemented, and I have personal experience in my family's life in its absence. Back in 2009, my younger sister Kendra and her husband Dylan were eagerly awaiting the arrival of their first child, Connor. Uh, we were all very excited, but it hadn't been smooth sailing. Back then, before the ACA, you could lose your insurance uh, policy if you became sick, pregnant, if you had a pre-existing condition. There were no um, 10 essential health care benefits, which we have now, that all insurance companies had to provide. When she disclosed that she was pregnant, the cost of her policy skyrocketed so much that she had to drop coverage and pay for everything out of pocket. This was unfortunate, but they thought once Connor was born, they would reapply and everything would just move on. But that's not what happened. Kendra suffered severe postpartum complications. Instead of celebrating my nephew's arrival, suddenly my sister was fighting for her life. And what made it worse was we didn't know if we were going to be able to keep her in the hospital or even how we were going to be able to pay for her care. I think that there are too many families who have had similar situations who are having to wonder what if uh, this would happen to my family. I've talked to people in our communities uh, who have suffered through gun violence, who have suffered through similar health care issues. And I would say that when we have elected officials who repeatedly vote against health care, expanding insurance, expanding access to health care, against women's health care, when we have elected officials who vote against common sense gun safety legislation, that hurts our communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, please. Thank you. Okay, Lisa. My lesson. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Lisa Bumani. Um, and the first thing I wanted to say is that if there's anything we've learned over the past couple of years, it's that um, voting matters and democracy matters. So with that, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this um, forum tonight. I think it's so important. And I really, I'd like to thank you, our audience, for coming and becoming informed voters. We know how important that is, especially in these times. Um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. My parents divorced when I was young, so money was always really tight for my mom and I. Um, fortunately, from grants and a lot of student loans, I was able to attend Brown University, where I met my now husband. Um, I subsequently went to medical school where, um, and <clears throat> in Philadelphia, and then I did my residency back at Brown in OBGYN. My husband and I moved to this area about 15 years ago when my husband took a job in New York City, and we were looking for a wonderful place to raise our children, where the quality of living was good and the education was excellent, so of course we chose New Jersey. I am one of the many women who were activated to run after 2016. I looked around and saw that I, there was no one who represented my values at any level of government. And I saw politicians who seemed to be satisfied with the status quo. And I knew that there was nobody fighting for these issues that I thought was so important for my community. And I thought I could be that person who fights. As a physician, I believe everyone deserves access to quality and affordable health care. Not only because as a society, we benefit when everybody is healthier because they have health care, but it's actually more affordable for all of us when everybody is insured. And as an OBGYN, my focus has always been about women's health care. And when I saw at that time, Chris Christie had defunded women's health care by $50 million and the rates of breast and cervical cancer had skyrocketed, I knew somebody had to stand up for those values. I know time is running short, so I'm going to say that I wanted to be that person, and I think both Darcy and I are here to fight for those values and represent our community. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Good evening, everybody. I want to start by saying I'm kind of glad I'm running against blood. I see a lot of blood bags out there. My name is Brian Bergen. I, uh, I'm running for state assembly this year. I want to start by thanking the League of Women's Voters for putting this on and everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, I was a West Point graduate. I was an attack helicopter pilot in the Army for eight years. 
I'm a small business owner and a proud father of two young children. The fact of the matter is that the state of New Jersey is in really bad shape. We have the highest debt in the nation. Just last year alone, we increased spending by $1.2 billion. And the democratically controlled legislature doesn't seem to want to do anything to fix these problems. They continue to tax and spend and tax and spend with no end in sight, no matter what the fiscal condition of the state is. And we have to do things to fix a problem. And the fact of the matter is, over the course of tonight, we're going to outline some direct, actionable, immediate things that can be done in Trenton that will lower the tax burden on the state, lower property taxes, and continue to make New Jersey a great place to live. As a small business owner, I directly understand the impact of overregulation on small business. We need people in Trenton who understand the needs of a small business, about growing and starting a family in the state of New Jersey, and who are dedicated to reducing the tax burden that plagues all of us. I'm Brian Berg, I'm running for State Assembly, and I look forward to answering all your questions tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Tony? Thank you, and I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight and all of you for attending. I want to take a moment to introduce my wife, Amy, who's here with me tonight. Um, you don't do what elect officials do without the love and support of your family. So for me, to have her tonight is here special. Uh, I'm running for office because I want to continue to fight to make New Jersey more affordable for everyone. I've never voted for a tax increase in the time I've spent in the legislature. In fact, I have an A rating uh, for fighting to protect taxpayers. I've championed sound fiscal policies, like my legislation to index tax brackets to inflation and eliminate the marriage tax penalty. All of those measures have at times been brought up on the floor of the Assembly, only to be tabled by the Democratic majority. Just look at the last two years under the Murphy administration uh, and, the and the democratically controlled legislature. Legislature. Spending has been up over 11%. In the last two years, we've seen 20 plus tax increases, all of which has had a negative effect of driving our residents out of state. I've fought against all of those every single time on the legislative floor. I want to continue my fight for, a safe, for safer communities. Uh, I, hosted, I sponsored the legislation that established the capacity police officer position that places a retired police officer in our schools and in our houses of worship. And now I have the legislation to uh, establish the RSVP3 pilot program, which would provide uh, training for individuals to be able to recognize traits in individuals that may cause one of these events so that we can stop it before they occur. I've proven that I can work across the aisle. In the years that I've been in the legislature, I've had over 110 pieces of legislation through the legislature signed by the governor into law. That proves that I have what it takes to gain respect from both sides of the aisle and get things done. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so now we'll begin. Norristown. 